1969 marked the introduction of the VG Scientific SQ2, our first XPS system. In the following 50 years, we have created nearly 50 models of XPS and other surface analysis instruments. To mark this milestone, we were delighted to have the opportunity to talk to our very first XPS customer, Professor Jim Carson from the University of Surrey. We wanted to find out why XPS was an important technique in those early days, what types of problems could be solved, and how the technology has evolved to meet the needs of researchers working in material science now. It's great to be here helping to celebrate the uh, anniversary, 50th anniversary of the delivery of the first XPS instrument. I was one of the early users of this technique and currently I'm an emeritus professor, retired uh, of material science here at the University of Surrey. But I established the XPS group here in 1970 when I joined from the electricity labs in Leatherhead. Surface analysis was really impossible when I became interested in it, um, because it goes right back to my PhD, which started in 1958, looking at the growth of uh, films, which became stable at about 200 nanometers on Magnox alloys. Magnox alloys were used to clad uranium in the first generation of commercial nuclear reactors. My job was to understand uh, the best alloy, and, uh, what composition would be good for these. It was frustrating. We could measure the thickness and we could follow its behavior over months, but we couldn't tell what, what it was made of. We knew a bit of beryllium in magnesium transformed its behavior, but we couldn't analyze it. And that really inspired me for the rest of my career to make sure that I always knew what made good alloys good, what's in that oxide. From then onwards, I was always following routes to achieve this culminating in 1969 with the arrival of XPS, the perfect instrument for this. Well, first of all, you use the word system because it genuinely was a system. It wasn't a dedicated XPS spectrometer, which other companies were beginning to market. Um, VG were vacuum specialists, as the name suggests, and they were used to building complex vacuum systems. Uh, so the ESCA 2 um, which I helped design in the first one, was dedicated to following the behavior of metals in principle um, in a variety of gases under a variety of conditions uh, with a stage that could be heated up until around 500 C at least, attached to uh, feed-throughs that enable the thermocouple to be brought into contact with the test piece. So we weren't having to guess the temperature. We knew exactly the temperature of the material. We were oxidizing in whatever atmosphere. So for calibration, or even for use of the instrument, um, there was no such thing as a data system or, or anything you could do. Uh, we had a, a flatbed recorder and the spectrum was printed out on the scale here. Um, you can see it's regular uh, centimeter, millimeter paper, graph paper. Uh, so we had to count squares and then do a bit of math to get how and what each square was worth in terms of, of energy shift. Um, I, I found another one there uh, where I had annotated it. I think this is the dated 1971. In 73, VG introduced the PDP-8 computerized uh, data system, which, which transformed our work. Each of the successive instruments we bought created something new for us. And so the ESCA lab was a great instrument. Again, we could do things with it. And then for ease of operation, wow, we have the KRFA. A superb instrument, fast to use, incredibly uh, responsive and with an excellent resolution. You couldn't want for anything better. Uh, I guess maybe you've got something else up your sleeve, but it's going to be hard to beat. <laughs> For 
Following our conversation with Professor Carlson, we were delighted to give him a demonstration of the latest instrument that we have developed, the Thermoscientific Nexa Surface Analysis System. During the demonstration, Professor Castle was showing the advanced capabilities of the instrument, high performance XPS, automated sample transfer, and the additional analytical techniques the Nexa system offers, ISS, Reels, UPS, and Raman. He was also shown advanced data processing using a thermo scientific Avantara software suite, complete with the knowledge viewer tool. Well, for many of the uh, uh, traditional things that I have done in the lab, uh, having done the XPS, I would then have to walk the sample uh, to a different lab, a different department, or in some cases, a different university. You have actually managed to combine most of those functions and techniques into one envelope. Uh, I can see everything I need being done within the one room. So thank you for that. That's great. It's great news because people still wonder why something has happened and the story is there in the surface.